Uh, this is our rattlesnake. I know you, some of you already have questions about that green 260. I'll explain that in a minute. I've got a light brown 260 that I've blown up about 8 or 12 inches of it. We're not even going to use all of that. I've got a 6 inch heart that I haven't inflated at all. And as you can see, this is a metallic. It's got that really long neck there. and That really comes in handy on this particular creation. I've got two 5 inch rounds, a yellow and a green to match the green that we're using for the body. The green is slightly larger than the yellow, about maybe two inches. The yellow is about an inch and a half or so. And then the green 260 in question. Some of you know this and some of you don't. We've blown it up with about an inch and a half left uninflated. And I got this nice little S curve shape. Uh, this is one of the sh shapes that I'll use for a snake. The other, of course, is the infamous spiral. And the way you get both of these shapes is it's, I say it's rather simple. If you practice it some, it is. Uh, the first couple of times you do it, you'll probably be frustrated. But these techniques are worth practicing so that you'll get them right. The way you do it is you take your 260, you blow it up all the way, or as much as you're going to inflate it, I should say, and then you let the air back out of it, and then you reinflate it. But when you reinflate it, you'll do one of two things. To get this S shape that you have, uh, you'll take it, put it on your hand, and I'm going to lay it right there against my forefinger and hold it my, with my thumb and then what you do is you snake it pardon the pun in and out of your index and your forefinger like that so that you get that S pattern there when you inflate it it will go follow that pattern in between your fingers and you'll get this lovely S pattern now if you want to get the spiral and you can see I've got a nice tight spiral there again blow it up beforehand let the air back out of it and then reinflate it a second time and the reason I inflate it and then let the air out and reinflate it it pre-softens the latex and it makes it, I found, hold the curve a little bit better or the spiral. Again, for the spiral, you just take and do like before and then I wrap it around just one finger. And you see how I'm wrapping it loosely, I'm not pulling it snug. And then inflate it and then you'll get that nice spiral. If you want a, a larger spiral that's not as tight, you can go around two fingers. Or you can, uh, I've seen a lot of people that get a piece of about three quarter inch, half to three quarter inch PVC pipe, spiral it around that, carry that with you. Practice that technique, it's a lot of fun, and you get some, not just snakes, but some really neat ideas that you can do with that. Now we're gonna start with our 260 green. That's gonna be the body of the snake. At the very end where the nozzle, where the head is gonna be, I'm gonna make a pair of fold twists. About two or three fingers wide once they're folded. This is gonna be his mouth, so make your first one, and then your second one. So there's his, the lips for his mouth. Then I'm going to take the green round, divide that into two equal bubbles. This will give him some cheeks. Give his head a little more character. Also helps lock everything in place. And then I'm going to take the yellow, five inch round as well, divide it into two. And attach it to his head, just bring it up around and cross it over just like they did the, the green. That gives his eyes. And if you take and position them like that, you can see how the cheeks push his eyes up to the top and give him a nice nice head shape there. Then you take the six inch heart uninflated and all I'm going to do is just put it in his mouth and I'm going to grab the nozzle and pull it up and wrap it around so that it goes in behind his head so that that heart lays right up in the middle of his mouth and now you've got a nice snake tongue with a little bit of a forked tongue effect on it. You could stop there if you're not going to make a rattlesnake you don't need the rattle, so you could stop there and have just a really cute little snake. Let's draw some eyes so you can see that. But then we're going to add the rattle. Since this is a Western DVD, and when you think of the Old West, you naturally think of rattlesnakes. So we need a rattlesnake. So we're going to take our snake, we're going to set him aside, and then we're going to take that light brown 260 that I had, and I've trimmed the nozzle really close. And we're going to start by making a little round bubble on the end of that, a little button. And then we're going to make two pinch twists right after that. I'm going to show you two techniques for doing this. You can make the pinch twist individually, so make a little round bubble. Make a pinch twist. Just like that. There's one of the little things on this rattle. And we're going to repeat that process, but between every pair of pinch twists is a little bitty, tiny, tiny little spacer bubble. See how it nestles up in between those two pinch twists? Just enough that you don't have a gap in there. And then you'll do your second pair of pinch twists. Now this is another way you can do this. When you're doing, this makes a great six pack on the body by the way. You go ahead and make your two bubbles first. Make them round. Lock them together and then 
divide them like that to make your two pinch twists. That's the other technique that you can use to get your two pinch twists. So you can make them individually, or you can make two bubbles and then split them, you know, just make a, basically a little tiny lock twist. And you can see how the little small tiny bubble I've got in there fills in that gap, otherwise you'd have a little air space in there. So again, for however many sets of rattles you want to make, make your little bubble. And then your two pinch twist. However you want to do it, either individually or together. So just like that. And make as many of those as you want. We're going to stop here. Then I'm going to pop this excess off. And then we're going to take this piece that I've just released, or that I popped that off. We're going to take that and the end of this tail and just tie those together. Trim off the excess. And you get a nice little rattle on the end of his tail. Now, if you want to give it a little bit of extra character before you uh, tie it, or before you inflate it, actually, you can pour a little bit of salt down in there and then tie it off, uh, blow it up and then tie it off. Make sure the salt falls down to this end rattle and then when you shake it, you'll get a nice rattle effect. I didn't do it on this particular one. I do it sometimes. It just depends on where I'm at. But there's your little rattlesnake.